What's up? What's up, everybody? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. As we always do each week, grab your vices. Um, get ready to chill out. Let's get into a few things. Um, this is episode eleven of Straightforward with Miss B, alongside with my guest co-host AG. What's up, AG? Said now, what's going on? This limb, this number limb, a limb. <laughs> <laughs> How do you spell a limb? Same way you spell, spell the other one. Oh my Eleven. god! <laughs> that down just, south Alabama. You just got to put an emphasis. Right. Don't yeah. even don't even put the V in there. Just, limb. Yeah, a limb, a limb. <laughs> but yes, this is episode eleven. Everybody. Um, um, before we get started, um, uh, thank you for all the, you know, people that listen in to us each week. They check us out on the streaming platforms. They check us out on YouTube as well. Um, they're following us. So I do want to pre, I appreciate everybody, um, that is being supportive of the podcast. We have reached the 11th episode. So I am very, very happy about that. And we will continue to, you know, just be consistent. Even though I was on vacation this week, I'm still bringing yeah. you guys a um, bring you guys an episode. So, you know, shouts out to me for that. But yay, yay. <laughs> um, so yeah. So as far as my uh, my, you know, weekend week goes, uh, just a quick little recap here. I did travel to um, San Antonio, Texas. Um, shout out to my friend Aki. Um, I hadn't seen my friend. This is a childhood friend. Um, I have known since about the sixth grade and, you know, it's nice to just, you know, sometimes just get away real quick, you know, just even if it's nowhere re really far or international, um, just a, a quick little escape, which is what I needed. I needed some relaxation time. And just, you know, be able to catch up um, with my childhood friend. Um, so I really, really had, I had a great time. I met some people. I met some of his friends. Shout out to Phil and shout out to Matthew as well. I don't know if you guys will listen in. Maybe Aki will um, share this episode with you guys. But um, I had a great time hanging out with you guys, you know, getting to know you better. I know you all um, have podcasts or will be sp starting your own kind of podcast yourselves. So, you know, I'm always here to support if you guys need me to come on as a guest, I'm always down for that and vice versa. I will be bringing, you know, at some point bringing you guys on as well. And, um, yeah, so it was nice to kind of get, you know, that little networking in and, uh, yeah, so that was basically, you know, like I said, I was on vacation, a quick little vacation this week, so I wanted to just kind of get out of town real quick. Um, how was your week go? Uh, mine went slowly but surely. Uh, I'm still trying to meet some of my family, and I done went to another funeral. This one on my dad's side. I had to take him to the funeral this weekend. Oh, wow. Yeah, he was in Alabama, down in Slum, Alabama. Okay, okay. Yeah, man. I'm going to meet some new cousins or something, but this guy don't know nobody for real. Who? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> man, I don't know nobody. <laughs> I was like, man, you know the dead person. And that's it. And one more person. <laughs> 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 I'm thinking I'm going to meet my cousins and speak, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know what I'm saying? It's so crazy. You know I know. It's so crazy sometimes that, you know, we be people just have family that they no have no idea about. You know what I'm saying? Like, right? Oh, bunch of them. It'd be a lot of them. It'd be a <laughs> lot of them that you have no. Like my uh, biological father, um, who was not in my life. I'm sure he has kids. You know, other kids. So I have have siblings out there in the world. I'm sure, um, but I don't know who they are. You know, oh, that's crazy. Very crazy. I just hope I've never. Man, friend, bro, man, I awesome. never. Hopefully, I ain't never talked to them before. Thought they was cute. I thought they was cute. <laughs> Fine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 
you know what I'm saying? Take a DNA test, man. I need to do the uh, what's the little thing? Ancestry or Twenty Three and Me? Do one of those. Send my little DNA sample in. Oh yeah. See if I can uh I'm all messed up. find I'm some folks. See, I'm all messed up. I don't really know. Yeah, yeah, but you know, you know, that's how people live their lives, and especially like you know our grandparents, great grandparents. They had a they had a lot of children. Mm-hmm. Seven, eight, thirteen, fifteen <laughs> kids. Like yeah, what? Average nowadays it was two, an impossible three. Yeah. Nowadays. Yeah, no more than four for sure. It's the average. But yeah, I don't I don't know what they was thinking about back in the day having all those kids. I don't get it. Was they? That's all they were doing. That's all the mama had to do was have kids. No, what she they were, what they were slick trying to do is is build up a team to help out help out on that farm. Oh, whether it's picking cotton or you know <laughs> milking cows. Yeah, work. yeah, they need help. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh yeah, it's gonna have to be a lot of y'all. All right. I know the least it used to be was five. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be no less than five. Ain't nobody want no one and two. <laughs> it <was> five, <laughs> five, seven, eight, ten, fifteen. <laughs> Right. Of us. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah, I'm talking shit. Well, we wanted to start off of uh, uh speaking of like, you know, just children coming into this world and um and families. Um, this has been in the news and I thought it would be a very interesting conversation. Um Leah Thomas. Leah Thomas, for those of you who do not know, um, is a transgender swimmer. Um, who is Leon? What his real name? Leon. She might as well be. Oh my God! Don't get his per. <laughs> get his woman. A, oh don't get God. that man. That is not a woman. Oh my God! We starting <laughs> off. Listen, this is a LGBTQI friendly podcast. I am an ally. So, well, the words that right, the right. words that come out of Ag's mouth is his own opinion. <laughs> And it's not the shared opinion of this podcast. I just needed to put that disclaimer out there. Uh, But anyway, um, so, yeah, so basically um, um, she's been in the news. uh, Respectfully, I'm going to, you know, call her by the correct pronoun. She's been in the news in the competitive sports arena. Last Thursday in Atlanta, um, Thomas became the first known transgender athlete to win a U.S. college swimming championship. Um, but the victory came with a lot of backlash, especially among right-wing politicians and groups that oppose trans athletes competing in women's competitions. Um, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, um, for one, who's always kind of, uh, you know, he's been on the anti-LGBT kick for quite some time. Um, he actually came out with a proclamation which declared um, the Florida resident named Emma Wayant or Wayant um, to be, who was actually the second place holder during the competition as being the rightful winner of last week's competition. Now, speaking of the Olympic Committee and the NCAA as well um, and their requirements, so The International Olympic Committee um, started allowing trans athletes um, to compete in 2004. um, And their requirements basically at that time was that the athlete had to legally change their gender, which means go, you know, driver's license needed to change from man to woman. Also, they required for them to um, undergo genital surgery as well. you know, to do a reassignment surgery. If you had a penis, then you would change it to, you know, basically like an artificial vagina. Um, And then in 2010, the NCAA set their own kind of rules for this, and they began allowing trans women to compete um, only after completion of one year of testosterone suppression, uh, which is if you are a man and you're transitioning to be a woman, um, hormones, taking hormones or moans as they call them, um, is part of that process. 
Um, also, I believe they are required in order to get put on the hormone pills, they are required to go through um, psychological, uh, you know, some uh, psychological therapy and everything as well. Um, so that those were rules. And then throughout the years since then, the Olympic Committee and also the NCAA went back and they kind of modified their requirements on it as well. And it's continued up to this day to still be one of those areas where it's like it, we're living in a world now where we are progr progressing or have progressed um, to the point where we are allowing, you know, trans people or trans athletes in particular, um, to participate in these sports events as well. Uh, but, of course, of course, with that, we still have a large group of individuals or organizations who, who just don't really want to stand by that, and they have, you know, their opinions that, hey, if it's a women's sport, um, it started off as a women's sport, um, coming in as a trans woman gives them an unfair advantage as some things as far as their bodies um they talk about like the physicality muscles you know just men are built a certain way you know other than women women and so they feel like from a physical standpoint a man has an advantage but if you are a man transitioning to be a woman and if you went through all of the therapy and you're taking the uh, hormone pills and the testosterone suppression, um, that kills some of that, that kills a lot of the physical um, masculinity that you once had. But again, even with that, you still have a large group of people that is against it. Um, so my question today um you know, is should trans athletes be allowed to compete? And my answer to that is the whole thing is so one-sided because you will never find a a, a, a man, to, I mean, a, a, a woman transitioning to be a man trying to compete with the men. It's yes. just one-sided. No, they do. Oh. I mean, I don't have their names pulled up, but there, I'm sure there are women who are who who are now trans men that are competing or may want to compete. Well, we know their chances of winning is not great as it is for for the other side. Why? What do you mean? Why? We have we have we have women genetically, you know, born women who are born with a lot of testosterone. We have women that are born very tall. We have women that are born very big or very masculine. They have muscles and, you know, thick calves. And, and yeah, they can't compete against, against men. I just don't, I, this is me, it's not nothing to do with the podcast. Like she said, this is my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's right. Because when that, what's her name, Leah? Yeah. When she got up to do her interview, mm -hmm. that was a man. Why you say that? By that her features? Like no woman, by no, her by voice? Her voice? Yes. That was a man. Well, I mean. That was a man. <laughs> I don't care. You can say whatever you want. No, no, no. But no, I'm just I'm not trying to change your opinion <laughs> on how you feel, but I just like to give context for people who are listening. Okay, for people who are not familiar with trans trans, right? <laughs> Transgenders. Now, just because you take the, the hormone pills, just because you may go get the surgery does not mean that necessarily that your voice is going to change. You may still have a deep voice. Not all people who transition and, like I said, take the hormone pills and everything, everybody's body reacts a, a, a different way. You may have some trans women who talk, and they talk like women. You know what I mean? 
and it, the the hormones have helped soften them. You know what I'm saying internally, and have helped increase the the pitch of their voice, so it's not as deep as it used to be, right? But then but you may have thing that I didn't like. You ain't let me finish. Well, go ahead, sweetheart. Ladies first. Right. And then, like I said, on the other hand, you may have transgenders who may go through the entire process as well, and they still have a deep voice. We were just talking about my, excuse me, we were just talking about my voice last week. You don't sound like no man. But I don't sound like, a, I don't sound like no woman either. I don't sound like most women. You sound like you. <laughs> That's because you're used to hearing me. <laughs> you're used to Ain't my voice. Ain't nobody you think somebody is going to think you a man? They might. I have a deep voice compared to other women. But it, besides that, we ain't going to go down that route. Uh, but besides that, um, the physical features, a lot of times when they – depending on how strong of your genes are, you know, your DNA and your genes, even if you take the hormone pills and go through that process, you may still have manly features. Therefore, you know, a lot of times for those transgenders who do, they go and have, they have, you know, they do uh, what they call it, a uh, facial feminization surgery. Uh, basically, they may get like their jawbone shaved down so it can be a lot more curved instead of square and structured. They may get their um, their eyebrows kind of lifted a little bit so it could just look more feminine. They may get things done to their cheekbones so that their cheeks will look, lo look a lot more feminine. So it just it just all depends. But, you know, just because she did an interview and to you of course that's your opinion that to you it's not fair <laughs> they were still a man it's not fair then that's just your opinion it's not fair that's taken away from a a a, a, a regular woman mm -hmm. that's taking her spot and then I think I read somewhere where this guy was on the he was on the on the men's team at one time before he did the before he did all that. Yeah, he didn't he didn't start transitioning until like 2017, 2018. Yeah, he was on the men's team. Right. And no, uh uh. That's another no no, man. You was already on the men's team, now you're gonna go to the women's team. Because he no longer identifies as being a man. They they taking this stuff too far, man. That's just plain and simple. Some of this stuff that they want to do, it's, it's a, you can't do it. They just pushing the limit with this stuff. They they taking it to the limit, and they getting their way just because they cry about it all the time. Because they'll start complaining, and it's not fair, but really, you ain't looking at the other side. What you doing ain't fair either. You taking away from a woman. You taking a spot that somebody else, if it was me competing against her, you know how all of us get on the thing and get ready to dive in the pool? When they when they blow the whistle to shoot the gun, I mm -hmm. wouldn't even go. All of us just stay there and let her, let her go and go by herself. So just <laughs> protest the, the swim meet, yeah. basically, yeah, and man, don't I'm swim. Not finna, I'm not going to compete against them. You know what I'm saying? I'm not doing it. No. So you don't believe in equality? What's equality? I'm just saying, like, even at the simplest level of equality... You have to look at look at black and white issues. That's not the same thing. See, y'all trying to put something that ain't the same <laughs> with something else. It's not the same thing. And you can't sit here and tell me it is. That is not the same thing. It's talking about equality. <laughs> if anything, you going against equality because that ain't even. It's not even no more. <laughs> you got a man with a female. With right. women. Even right. though she did have whatever process it is mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying to try to take some of her on yeah that's that's not fair that's not equal that's not equality to me right yeah you just gave she, you got the advantage it's not a that he want to train i mean she trained harder than the next person they could train the same but he, she automatically gonna have the advantage to me. ain't nobody saying this but me 
Oh, we know. This is AG's Man, own opinion. We, we swimming. We think, I mean, they, then you know another person that agree with me? Kaylin Jenner. Man. It's the exact same thing. Now, I read it. No, he you. did. No, yes, he I did. read that too. I did. I read it. <laughs> he agreed with me. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I understand. I never said that they could, like, I, I'll explain my opinion once you finish with yours. <laughs> it ain't fair. I'll I'm just let you get yours off your chest. I don't want nobody writing me, because, hey, I don't. Send him all the hate mail. Before. Send him the hate no, mail. that's not hate mail. Then you would be hating me. No, I was just sad. People who listening if in. Said, <laughs> if you sent me some hate mail because I said what I said, that means you hate me for telling the truth. But why did you think you're telling the truth? Listen, your truth, your opinion n- n- is not necessarily the truth. To me, it is. Why it ain't? To you, oh, an opinion is. is your opinion. And that's the truth, man. When it got something to do with a male that's transitioning to be a female competing in a woman's sport, mm-hmm. that's a different than going to the bathroom with a woman. You know what I'm saying? This is not this. Co- it's competition right here. Mm-hmm. And when competition comes, that's a whole different ball game to me. Yeah. So my opinion on it is I'm 50-50 on the situation. I feel as though, and I think I heard somebody use this analogy, that's just like an able, on one hand, it's just like an able-bodied person getting in a wheelchair and asked to participate or participating in the Special Olympics. And I said, that kind of makes sense. <coughs> You're not it disabled. Do, it, do, it, it do, but it don't. Because them people in that wheelchair, they know how to operate that thing because they do it every day. You don't know how to operate that thing like they do. This is a this is a this is a a, a a a a multiple, you know, champion swimmer. This person know how to swim. He ain't never won then. I mean, she had never won that until she won that the other day. But she's As already. Man, he, he wasn't a champion. But he, he wasn't a champion. There's no man. But he been competing though. He was no champion. So I mean, I understand you from that standpoint. He's been competing. Unlike me, if I get in a wheelchair, I don't know nothing about it because I've never been in the wheelchair. But if I just stayed in the wheelchair. But let me finish with my opinion. Yeah, let me quit fighting you. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> Good Lord. But like I said, I'm kind of 50-50 on it. Um, because, like I said, I'm an ally of the community. I do believe in equality. I do believe in respecting people for who they choose, you know, who who they feel that they are inside. If they choose that they are a different gender than what they were born, go ahead, be free to do whatever and live the way that you want to live. Um, with that being said, I do believe that transgender should be able to compete However, I do believe that the Olympic Committee and the NCAA and whoever else organizations need to truly sit down and figure out a way to still be inclusive, inclusive, but inclusive in a way in which it does not negatively impact you know, the other groups, meaning whether it's men swimming or women's swimming competition, um, still allow, you know, still allow those groups to uh, be able to compete with their own, I guess, kind, if you want to put it. Um, But maybe there just needs to be just like we do have Special Olympics. I mean, it may need to be a transgender section in the Olympics. Olympics yeah or some I'm section or if there's a, sw- a, sw- a, s- a separate swim meet that allows trans um women 
you know, trans women or men or whatnot to swim um, and still, you know, get the same credit and, and accolades and acknowledgement as um, the bio, you know, biological yeah. women. And men. I agree with something like that because to me, with the LBTQ, they just, you can't have all the rights of, you know what I'm saying? When you try to get everything that the other people got, it's not, you, you can't do that. You can't have all the rights of that other sex. I mean, of course. I mean, you, you, yeah, of course you shouldn't be because the other sex are born, you know, with certain um, aspects to them that makes them special, you know what I mean, or one of a kind. Like women, we have the ability to give birth, you know. Right. Um, no other gender is able to, to do that. So and no trans, and, and then no trans transgender gender. female going to be able to do that either. Not saying that that ain't something that they gonna come up with <laughs> pretty soon. You know, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> they they just came out with a uh, what is that I saw today? They came out with a contraceptive pill um, that men will be able to take um, to prevent um, getting somebody pregnant. So they they tested it out, and it's ninety nine percent accuracy. So now men, you know, women, we ain't got to worry about being the only ones taking contraceptive pills. Now men can do, you know, will have that ability to do that. But, but yeah, so like I said, this transgender, um, you know, topic I thought was something that was extremely controversial and I thought it would be, you know, a great topic for us to discuss. And like I said, I'm, I'm 50-50 on the fence with this thing. Like I said, I, I'm all about equality, um, you know, everybody really being inclusive, be. but th there's always a better way of doing that. And I think that, like I said, you know, these Olympic committees and, and stuff, they need to go back um, to the drawing board and fi figure out how they are able to do that. Because, I mean, you just, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, people should be, like I said, People should just be respective of how someone chooses to live, chooses to live their life. Um, and if some, if in some areas the world and government can accommodate, you know, these individuals, then, you know, that's great. Um, I do agree with you. You know, they're not going to be, you know, accommodations are not going to be made in every single area, but at least with some areas, um, you know, just make it right, you know, so. Yeah, because you just got to look at it like if, let's say if one of those girls competing was your daughter. Mm -hmm. You done spent all this time and money to get your daughter up there to compete for this national championship. Mm -hmm. And hey, look who she, who she got to compete against all of a sudden. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. That's just how I look at it. You stopping my child, we we probably been the best the whole time. Right. We've been winning. Not this time. <laughs> I can't be, I, I can't even win another one no more than that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm done. <laughs> right. It's a so, wrap. Yeah, <laughs> like, so that's just how I look at it. And competing, just leave that competing for so long. Don't no, they it. should be able to compete, but like I said, maybe just a separate meet or separate competition. Each other. Yeah, they shouldn't should not be allowed at all to compete. I think they should be able to compete, but just in a different way. Okay, because they still talented. You know what I mean? They're they're athletes. They've they've done this all their lives too. And then so. you know another one that's up and coming. Who? Dwayne Wade's son and daughter. Yeah. Cause I seen the outfit that that he had on the other day. Mm -hmm. So he living a lifestyle coming all the way up as a child that way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 
Um, what else? So let's get on this real other little thing real quick and we'll get deeper into the second topic uh on next week. Um, uh, but yeah, so the crazy is also going on this week is Megan Thee Stallion, the rapper um from Houston, Texas versus uh, 1501 Certified Entertainment, um, the label owner, called Crawford. They was throwing shots at each other um, all week. Um, Carl Crawford basically was upset, um, stated that, you know, he was um, basically uh, going to sue Megan Thee Stallion. She is still technically signed um, to his label, even though she is working, uh, managed by Rock Nation. Um, that's Jay-Z's on Rock Nation. Um, but under her, you know, contract with um, 1501, she has to produce, you know, a certain amount of albums. She released um, she released uh, a, a little somewhat mixtape and tried to push it off as an album and Carl Crawford, you know, stated that she basically was trying to, you just finesse the system with that and that he's taken it to court. That kind of led to other conversations, and basically he made claims of, you know, her being an alcoholic as well as you, um, uh, she used cocaine. And then Megan took to Twitter, and she had some things to say about call, uh, basically, you know, clapping back at him. And also she alleged that call is a pill-popping cokehead himself. So they've just been going back and forth with the rah-rah, but what concerns me about the whole thing is that as a label owner, you are an owner. You're owner of a business. A parent, you know, clearly 1501, and Carl Crawford, you guys, um, is a former uh, baseball player. So he got a little coin, and he decided to start this record label, and he wanted to be somewhat of like an all-female um Hip hop MC record label, and you know Megan Stallion was the first female on the label who you know gained you know popularity and was selling some records and stuff like that. So, as far as his cons uh, success level, you know, as a label owner, you would say, okay, Carl has had some success, you know, with his label. Uh, but as an owner, you would think that you would just kind of keep business and personal business off the internet. Yeah, they got a real relationship going on though. You you had to you had to look and tell the whole story, the reason why this even coming up though. You know. Cause if y'all don't know that um they tried to squeeze Carl out, you know. Well he was he the owner of the record label, but it was a bigger label trying to squeeze him out and take Megan from Stagging just from him. Three, so, that was 300, I believe. Yeah, so it's more to that than just what's going on now. It's what started the whole thing. You know? But still, regardless, calling each other cokeheads and alcoholics, don't yeah, you think cool that's you too down, much? Cool you that's, how, that's where it's at now. You just try to, uh, what you call it, uh, or you, um, assassinating character now that's what they didn't got to yeah assassinating each other's character so i mean i mean lo both of them can have lawsuits for for what defamation to care liable <clears throat> if they wanted mm -hmm. to i just think that if you're a business person to that degree you shouldn't even if it's you even if you having trouble with one of your artists i don't think it just don't make you look good. And then for every other artist that signed to you, I really wouldn't want to be signed to no messy-ass label like that. I don't want my business out in the street like that. Well, he probably said he was a one-hit wonder in a way. You know what I'm saying? A one and done. No. Kind of start like that. Yeah, I don't think he thought. I mean, he don't. I don't think he thought I mean, he it was one that. and done, but I think he that. Carl is just one of those people, type of people who like to stay on the internet. You know, like um, what's the guy name who always talking shit? Oh, Whack One Hundred. You ever heard of him? I think he manages the game and um, what's the other rapper called Blueface? But he always on the internet giving his opinion on stuff. You know, just always on the internet. 
and he he an older guy, he <laughs> like around our age, but he always just talking mess on the internet. It's like it, it's as a as like I said, as a business owner, it just it just you know puts a bad light on you. I would not if if I was signed to call right now, I I nec- I would definitely wouldn't want to be signed to call. It was another rapper, a good female rapper. I forgot her name, um, but she had kind of came out, you know, with some statements. I think she left fifteen oh one. She left fifteen oh one right around the time the girl Erica Banks had came to the label, and you know, Erica Banks, she had that little one hit song um, last year or the year before last. Um, but she, this girl, she had some things to say about Call too. She was saying he just don't have his his um. Like the money situation went right. She would ask, you know, ask him for financial statements, you know, to see how much, you know, is being spent on her projects and her studio time and, you know, stuff like that. And he could never produce, you know, any um, financial statements and stuff like that. And, you know, it's, it's certain people, not all young people, I would tell these labor owners, not all young people are dumb. Not all young people are naive. Some young people do come in with a true business mindset. You know, they come in knowing, okay, if you're going to produce this for me, you said you're going to allot this amount of money um, towards what I'm doing, marketing me and all this other stuff, going on tour, blah, blah, blah. Um, I want to be able to see where the expenses are going. You're not just going to tell me, okay, we spent, you know, $2,000 $2,000 on this, but yet you can't produce a receipt. Yeah, that's a whole nother show. That's a whole nother <laughs> show. Because when they put that contract down and that pen on top of it and they sent that money on the side of it and tell you, if you sign this paper, we you get this money. That's the only thing they be worried about. Right. So. Right. Exactly. And like I said, we gonna, we gonna dive into this you know record label thing um a little further um on next week i gotta make sure i write that down so i won't forget um but yeah we're gonna talk about you know diddy and you know artists like mace former artists like mace and uh the other boy freddie p from miami who was on the band the show um they all you know coming out b4 b5 the little group there the little young boy yeah, so they all speaking out against um Diddy and but you know rumors have all has been swirling for quite some time about, you know, Diddy not doing his artist right, but like I said, that's we're going to say that for the next you Yeah. I mean? Well, you signed off on this cuz there's some artists that did it say, "Hey, you didn't do me like that because I got this. I got mine. You didn't get your cuz you ain't asked for it. You ain't negotiate." Right. But we going to talk about that next week. He trying to talk about it now. Y'all hear him? <laughs> we kept telling him. <coughs> we going to talk about it next week. <laughs> Good Lord. <coughs> but anyway, but Megan the Stallion, you know, you seem to be somewhat problematic, child. It's just always a lot going on with her. I hope she figure it out, you know, and keep pressing on and being successful and everything. And hopefully Carl figure his situation out, stay off the internet, you know, exposing your artist's business. It just don't put you in a good light at all. Nobody's going to want to do business with you, you know, in a minute. So just keep it off. Continue to grow your label. You had Erica Banks, you know, she did pretty good, you know, other artists, I believe, signed. Other female artists are signed to him as well. So yeah, just keep positive and just leave everything in the courtroom, basically. So that's all I had to say about that. Any lasting words, um, Ag? Oh uh, no, both of those topics we could talk about for days. So you know, it is what it is. Everybody got their own opinion, right? So. All right, y'all, but as y'all know how we do, we're going to see y'all next, next week. week. Um, and as we always say, don't forget to subscribe to our channel on all streaming platforms. That's STR8FWD. 
with MSB on all platforms. And you can also follow us on social media as well. And if you have any inquiries, um, advertising, business inquiries, um, hit us up, email at str8fwd media m e d i a at gmail.com all right till next time well, one. <laughs>